Hi, I'm Jeff Farnwald, director of the MBA program at Rockford University. About 18 months ago, the Rockford Chamber of Commerce set out to make networking easier in Rockford by identifying area people you should know in business. Currently, 41 people have been recognized and celebrated as one of these people. This series of talks held at Rockford University was designed to provide a vehicle for the public to hear from and learn about each of the people you should know. I hope you enjoy this talk. If you would all turn off your phones, that would be great. I'm going to introduce Karen Brown. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for being here. Karen has over 20 years of professional human resource experience and knowledge. Although her experience has predominantly been in healthcare, Karen's background also includes manufacturing, human services, retail, and education. She is currently the Vice President, Chief Operating Officer for OSF St. Anthony Medical Center here in Rockford. Karen has a Master of Business Administration degree from NIU in DeKalb. She holds professional certifications through the American College of Healthcare Executives, she is a fellow, Society, of, Society for Human Resource Management as a Senior Certified Professional, and Human Resource Certification Institute as a Senior Professional in Human Resources. She is a member of the Society for Human Resource Management, American Society of Healthcare Human Resources Association, you did great. You <laughs> American did great. College of Healthcare Executives, and the Rockford Area Society for Human Resource Management. You are busy ladies. It's only an hour, right? I know, I know. If I could get through this, I could get through anything. Karen is chair of the board for the Northern Illinois Workforce Alliance, formerly the Workforce Investment Board, co-chair of process analysis team for Transform past president of the board for the YWCA of Rockford, board member of the Byron Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. it is great, and the Discovery Center Children's Museum, and immediate past president of the board for the Central Illinois chapter of the American College of Healthcare Executives. She volunteers for the Golden Apple Teacher Award Program. Karen has served in several human resource leadership positions on a local and statewide level and teaches human resource certification preparation classes through Northern Illinois University. Please welcome Karen Brown. Thank, Thank you. you. So I appreciate that. Um, and I'm sorry to my Rockford University alum and, and uh, fellow folks here, uh, but my husband is an alum. So if that helps, you know, I, I'm an honorary one for that. Um, but what Michelle didn't say is that I'm actually also trained as a black belt in uh, the Six Sigma world. And so I love data. That you'll indulge me today because today their presentation is um, going to have a lot of rich data. I, you know, I think that it really helps us to um, find solutions and, and really to help guide us to the best outcome. So um, this, the future workforce of Rockford, will there be enough workers, is really part of a dialogue around the future workforce of Rockford. And I'll preface my information by telling you that I am not a statistician, um, and those of you who know me know that, um, and I'm not a labor economist. Um, so if you want more detailed information, certainly talk to the folks uh, that are more technical in this area. But what I am, though, and uh, Michelle told you, is a business person and a resident in this community. Um, I am the chair currently for the Workforce Investment Board, the Northern Illinois Workforce Alliance. I'm a volunteer for Transform Rockford, and I represent a large employer, OSF St. Anthony Medical Center. In the many discussions that I am privileged uh, to participate in, one of the topics that frequently comes up is workforce and jobs. Do we have enough jobs? Do we have the right workers? Do we have the right skills in the workforce? How many do we have today? What do we need in the future? So my hope is really that you will learn a few things about our situation in the Rockford area un and understand then that there are actions that we should be taking. And I do definitely welcome and encourage your uh, participation today and uh, participation in part of this dialogue. So with that, yay, it's working. This is good. All right. So this is Discussion, which I, you know, if we really delved into this, it could be. Um, but we'll look at our current state, where we're at in the United States in general. Just a quick um, update on that, and then we'll talk about Rockford and what's going on um, as far as the labor supply. Uh, you see some of the statistics and things we're going to cover. 
Um, we're going to talk about the demand, what are some of the job openings and, and the numbers that we're seeing. And then I think most importantly, or what I find really interesting, is the trend and what the trend is looking like from a labor and supply standpoint. And then finally, we'll end up with um, closing the gap and some of the strategies um, that are out there. I have to tell you, you know, as I look at this data, one of the things that I think about very strongly is, as I age, who's going to take care of me? And so will there be enough workers is really important and near and dear to my heart. All right. So with that, um, before we cover what's going on in Rockford, we do want to at least just kind of get grounded and see what's occurring within the nation. And the information that um, I will share with you comes from the Gordon Report. It's a consulting group um, that is used by our local workforce board and um, the Illinois Department of Employment Security, IDES. The Illinois Department of Employment Security and um, MC, uh, an economic group, um, are the ones that provided the data for this presentation. And I have to tell you, I give a real special thanks to Tom Austin. I don't know if any of you know Tom, but he's our local, local labor analyst for the IDES, um, and as well as Pam Fettis and um, Dearcy Buckholtz with the Workforce Connection. But I mean, all three um, provided all of this data. Believe me, I did not make it up. It, it came from very credible sources. So as we look at the nation, um, some of it, you know, I think we know what's going on. We, you know, we know what, uh, what's happening with our unemployment rate. But just so that I can ground us, do we know, is, it, is the unemployment rate in the United States going up or is it going down? This is the participation part. Down. down. Yay. Yay. Good job. It is. It is. It is going down. So just to give us that, no, this is good. You guys are unemployment rate actually fell from 6.7 percent this past year. So it is definitely going down. We are actually on track for full employment. And there was an article that I just read that said that the, um, the feds were saying that they really think by the end of 2015 that we will be considered at full employment. But by full employment, does that mean that there is still um, a percentage of the workforce that's unemployed? Five, yes. yes. I, I heard five. Five. Anybody else? Used to, used to be four. Thank you. I'm sorry, Jeff. You bet. And that's exactly. So there, are, there is a group that's out there. Five, um, I will give Gary credit. Five is actually what was quoted by the feds in this article that I just read. So they're saying that we're on track to be at a 5% unemployment at the end of the year, and that's the fed rate. But Bruce, I'm with you, at least in, in my learnings um, as I've gone through uh, this over the years. 4% is kind of the, the number that, you know, that we're looking at or that we typically look at. And exactly what you said, Jeff, as well, is that, yeah, there are always people that are in transition. Um, you know, maybe they're in between jobs. They may be going back to get re back in school. They may be off for family reasons, whatever the case may be. There's always a number um, of people that are out there that are not, not working. So that speaks to the full employment. Well, what are we seeing right now? The actual number of people in the job market is at its lowest, which is kind of surprising to me as well, especially as we see that the economy is um, picking back up again. So normally we see that people are um, re-entering and, and that they're coming back into the workforce. But this isn't happening. Why do you think it's not happening? Why aren't people re-entering the workforce? Yes. Um, it could be just the uh, opportunity gap. That's a very big hurdle to overcome to re-enter the workforce. Uh, employers, it's a very hard thing to explain. Right. Gap in employment. Right. Just uh, it could just be difficult for somebody to get a job. Uh, yeah, it could be part of it as well. Uh, could be what Jeff said too. People are just have given up. And they gave up. Yeah. And then there's a skill gap. We're going to talk a little bit about that too. A skill gap. Yes. They're, they might be making less, right? Wages could be in there, and that's a factor as well. Well, you know, some of the things that are out there too, um, and um, you know, I think most of us think about this too. Some of the reasons that may be out there are one of them: is baby boomers are starting to retire, so we're starting to see a larger number of people that are actually leaving the the workforce. And that, um, through this Gordon report, their information tells us that that's about half of the reason. The other half, and I thought it was interesting that they noted uh, in the demographics that males between the ages of uh, 15, or excuse me, 25 and 50, um, account for the the next largest group uh, within this population that's not re-entering. And you know, and I think about that. In fact, I was talking with somebody about this, and they said, "Well, yeah, they're living in their parents' basements." I'm like, "Well, that's I'm sure that I'm sure there's more to the story than that." Um, but you know, certainly, then you start thinking about you know how many more. 
more situations do we hear about stay-at-home dads? <coughs> you know, those kinds of things are happening. Or, you know, going back to school and, and some of those reasons that, that may be out there. Um, somebody else suggested as well returning military. You know, we're starting to see people again coming back. So that may be a lot of the reason why that's out there. Oh, was, uh, was there another one too? Incarceration. Incarceration. That's another reason, exactly. Especially if those numbers are going up, then that would be another, you're right, another good reason, Chris. So according to the Gordon Report, um, to add to this, we're confronted uh, with a legacy of over two decades of neglect by business and the wider society in developing our workforce, at least at the rate that's needed. The report states there is a human capital time bomb coming from this ignored updating of worker skills and providing students with education and training for the 21st century careers. And I think, Jeff, that goes back to the skills gap, again, that you were speaking to. Well, what can happen? Make sure I push this OK. Um, the outcome, and I know some of you in the very back may not be able to see this, the outcome could be economic stagnation. And I don't know about you, but that word just, that whole phrase did not sound good to me. I don't want economic stagnation, so we're not going to go there on what all that means, but it just does not sound good. All right, so I promised you we we're going to talk about what's happening in the Rockford area. Um, and for the purposes of this discussion, we're going to talk about the Rockford Metropolitan Statistical Area, the MSA, Rockford MSA, which includes, um, and this is Rockford, uh, Winnebago, and Boone counties, the two areas, which is um, in this population about 345,000 people. And I mentioned earlier that our data is pulled from Illinois Department of Employment Security and then Economic Modeling Specialists International, or MC which is where our local workforce folks pull their data. All right, now I know you're all excited about this. So what is our current unemployment rate? Um, and as you look, this is a graph that goes from 2004 to 2014. Um, and you can see that at our lowest point, we were at 5.6%. And where was the, the nation at? Right now, at 5.6%. We're currently at 9.5% in 2014. So, you know, we're still a lot um, higher than the, uh, than the United States number, but you can see we're actually on a relatively good trend. I think that that's, that's helpful to, to make sure that we know. Um, what happened in that 2007, 2008 timeframe? We had a crisis, an economic crisis, an economic tsunami, uh, you know, for lack of another word. So, yes. And I know it doesn't cover it in this one, but just this is kind of a bonus question. Um, and I won't ask you if you were here in 1982, but does anybody know what the unemployment rate in, Rockford, in the Rockford area was in 1982? 20, 23, 20, I was going to say 25%, kind of in that range. So we've weathered some pretty rough storms in this region. So 9.5 is still high, but it's, you know, again, it's certainly not as bad as we have seen in the past. Um, and I do believe that we're on a good trend. Um, one of the things that, they, that was shared with me, too, as I was talking with Tom about this is, you know, not all of our unemployed are actually related to the Boone and Winnebago County job or workforce. Some of this happens because there are layoffs that occur in Chicago and the surrounding areas. So, so you know, they're, they're accounted in this number. Um, the workforce, the definition for unemployment or unemployed is people who are available, able, and looking and between the ages of 15 and 65. Um, so that's just to kind of help ground you in that too. Many of our unemployed, and this is just a, a plug for the Northern Illinois Workforce Alliance Board, uh, many of the unemployed are actually going through programs that are funded through our particular group. So they're getting some support that way. So we've talked about the percentage. This is the actual numbers of people. So when you start looking at, again, the lives and the bodies of people that are affected, um, and for those of you who are in the back, the 2014 number is running around 15,000. And that number does include some people who are not um, currently receiving unemployment benefits, but they have in the recent past. There's a factoring that's included in that. So then we talked about the number who aren't in the workforce. This is the number that are employed. And again, it's just kind of the reverse of, of some of what we were seeing before. Um, our numbers from 2004 to 2014 are down about 2.5 percent or two and a half percent, so really not too bad. And somewhere around that 146, 147,000 people that we have in our workforce, just to give you a, a general idea. Um, somebody mentioned earlier about wages and the impact. Well, this isn't really factored into any of just the, the unemployment and the numbers. We haven't really even scratched the surface for that. So that's the supply side. Let's talk about demand. I knew you were going to ask about that. 
So how many jobs do we have available and what skills do they require? And you know, where, where are the jobs? Because that's an important thing as well. So if I look at the number of job openings, um, the, the group pulled for me, um, there's a web crawler that's used that they pull to see how many jobs are posted online. And just, uh, maybe you know, but how many jobs do you think right now um, are available online? In Rockford? In Rockford area. Yeah, Rockford MSA. 350? 1600? 350? 351. 351. You guys are like, I, I feel like the new, I feel like I feel like the price is right. That's just what I was going to say. I feel like I'm giving away the new car or something. You know, I have to tell you, if I was guessing at this point, those are all numbers that I would have included in this ballpark. Remarkably, there were 5,500 full-time jobs or 5,400 full-time jobs that were posted. Um, and that, if you think about it, that is really just, again, what the um, IDES folks d pulled from their web crawler. You know, I have to b believe that there are many jobs that are out there in, in employers' data banks that weren't posted through this process, and you know, so that there are some other opportunities out there. Um, Tom, of course, coached me very well, and you know, he said that the, you know some of these could be duplicate jobs. There's sometimes you know where you might have a few, but I don't think that. And he said, you know, that's not a it's not a uh, material number by any stretch of the imagination. So um, again, about 6,500 total jobs that are posted within the MSA that they were able to pull. And the large majority of them are full time. So I'm, I was surprised. It impressed me. And I, like you, I really had a much smaller number in my head. So if we have about 6,500 jobs, or even, again, 5,400 full time, and how many people did we have unemployed? 15,000, 15, exactly. You know, if we really were able to match up people, if they had the right skills for those jobs that were available, I did just some quick math, and it was about 6% unemployment. So it really has a huge impact um, you know, on that particular number. So I thought that was an interesting piece as well. So where are the jobs? Who's got them? Well, here are some of these. And again, I'll, I'll kind of give you at least a couple of the top ones. I'm willing to share this if anybody wants to leave their um, email address. I'm happy to, to push it out to you. But the top is Rockford Public Schools. Um, and it has the current number of postings compared to a year ago. But their current number of postings And they run uh, like Cormer, if you didn't know that before. Uh, Meyer, the new grocery store. Woodward, and they have 32. And I'm not sure, I didn't get a chance to ask whether or not this includes, you know, as they're starting to populate their new facility, if this really includes all of that. I don't believe that it does. So, you know, that number will go up. Um, Aerotech, Thermo Fisher, Chrysler, and they just had a nice ad this morning about cars and <coughs> buying cars this morning. So that's a good thing. Um, and then Rockford Health Physicians and so on. So just to kind of give you an idea. So really, again, you know, they're just kind of all, all across the board between, bless you, um, between different employers. And then I, am, I included this slide too. And I think the takeaway from that is, there, you know, it's not like a dominant piece of any pie. They're, you know, they're really nice distribution of different industries that our workforce works in. So are they, you know, are they skilled? Are they, you know, what kind of areas are they in? Um, the top one again, for those of you um, who might not be able to see it, is transportation and material moving um, occupations. And that is uh, about 854 of those jobs. So I don't, you know, I didn't look and I don't have the opportunity to look in, into a lot of detail at this point, but, I, you know, I can't imagine that those are highly skilled. I'm sure there are some skill requirements for them, but, you know, those are, I think, probably some pretty open positions. Um, office and administrative support occupations are the next one. Uh, sales and related occupations, healthcare practitioners, I'm not surprised about that, production, and then it goes into architecture and so on. Again, you know, there's, there certainly are some skills and some uh, requirements, but it really appears as though there's just a nice variety of different types of jobs. And, you know, as an employer, and I think all of us as business um, individuals, you know, may see our unemployment numbers and say, well, hey, there's a lot of people that are out there, but we, we know that they may not uh, be the right match um, that are, that's out there. Um, so skills gap definitely is, um, I think, a big part of the problem. So we've talked about supply, we've talked about um, demand. There are jobs that are out there. 
And so I know this is the moment you've all been waiting for. This is um, a forecast that Tom and his team did for us just to get an idea. And again, he would tell you there are a lot of qualifications or qualifiers that are added on this. But the top line, the red uh, line that's coming from the top and going down, is the supply group. Um, and then on the bottom, the blue that's going up is the demand. And if you look at that, it goes out to 2024, which really isn't that far away. You know, time seems to move a little bit faster for some of us. So at some point out there, past that white bar at the end, that those two lines are going to intersect. And so we will be at, a, you know, according to this, at a break even, or you know, we're going to certainly intersect down the road if we're on the same pace and we don't have an economic tsunami and you know and on all things um, considered continue so you know when i look at even with those variables that may affect it this really does give me pause and it, it should give us all pause this next slide is the same data but it's just kind of shown in a different way so again the blue on the top are the occupations and the demand and the um, red on the bottom is the workforce participation so it's going down and I just did some quick math on that one. The difference between the two is 27,000 people. So in, in, again, almost 10 years or even a little bit less, we're looking at a bigger gap um, in the workforce potentially than where we're at right now. So again, from my standpoint, it, you know, it makes me kind of stand back and say, wow, you know, what are we doing? And, and we, don't, we may not have the um, workforce that we need. Just to add in a little more food for thought, then I added just a couple of the um, demographics for us. This is some population information, and it says between 2010 and 2013, so over the last three years, we've dropped about 1.5%. So not, not huge, um, but that's certainly in there. This is um, population demographics, and I apologize for some reason this slide does not seem to want to work well, but it gives us a median age. The first bar chart, the first bar graph here, the yellow, orange, and the pink, are the uh, national inf US information. The, se the second group is Illinois. And the third group is uh, the Rockford MSA. And um, just so that you can be grounded, the total is the gold bar, the male is uh, orange, and then the pink is the female. What's interesting to me is I look, and I just look at the median age. The median age in Rockford is 38.5. We are a lot higher than Illinois, which is at 36.8, and then for the U.S. at 37.3. So we are an older population um, in comparison to the rest of the group. And then another area, and the education obviously is an area that we, we want to look at. What this tells us, it's got the first grouping is less than high school graduate, and again, it goes USA, Illinois, and then um, our local MSA. We're, you know, we're about the same. There's, uh, we have a little bit um, higher than Illinois number of people who don't have their high school or GED. Um, and for those of us who are connected with the Workforce Investment Board, um, we know that we've got about 45,000 individuals in this area that do not have a high school diploma or GED that could. Um, so it's a pretty high number, even though percentage-wise it's not too bad. Um, our high school graduate percent is pretty good. Um, our, some college or associate's degree is pretty good, but our uh, bachelor's degree amount really is, is pretty low. And I think most of us are aware of that. I did just see a report that actually started to break down that information even more by minority. So, uh, you know, by, by, by minority categories. So I think there's some opportunities um, there for us. So knowing all this um, and considering it all, what should we be doing? You know, what are some of the strategies that we should be considering? Well, I think first and foremost, we really need to look at how can we retain the people we have and grow our own. There are a lot of committed and loyal people in the Rockford area, and I think you know our focus can really be on that group. How do we develop them? How do we include up underrepresented um, individuals and areas of population in our workforce? How do we attract here? And, you know, how do we bring people back? And we've all seen a lot of the programs that are out there about you know bringing people back to Rockford. I've talked to individuals who have come back, and you know it's a kind of it's an exciting thing, and it and really um, is a good thing. How do we bring new people here? And there are a lot of groups that are engaged with you know making sure to connect with them, showcasing some of the good things that are out there. But you know certainly I think that's one of the the primary areas of focus that we can have. If there is opportunity, we need to be making sure that people know that so that they can um, they can come back here. Um, how do we then close the skill gap on education and, um, and training? I think that's, um, again, a lot of the things that we're focused on with the um, Northern Illinois Workforce Alliance Board. 
I mentioned GED. Uh, our group has put together and, and had been working on, or has been working on, um, getting people through the GED pipeline because we know that getting them through that pipeline gets them to that next step of, of additional education and including, you know, coming to Rockford University and some of our fine programs that we have. Um, we also have a lot of programs, um, one that uh, the Workforce Alliance Board had helped with in healthcare was helping to, re to train nurses through the pipeline. So, you know, if they had their CNA and then were incumbent workers, um, they helped provide some grant funding and, and help us to go ahead and get them in to become registered nurses. So those are some of the things that we can do to, to continue to really move that forward. We really do need to effectively use, um, use our groups together and speaking of our groups, there are a whole group of individuals and, and uh, people who are without a doubt very talented and committed people um, and who have very strong, we have very strong programs. We do have limited resources that are out there and we do a good job with what we have, but I think to be even more effective, um, we really need to, to again partner and align all of this group. <laughs> Consider participating um, in some of the collaborative uh, regional uh, programs that we have out there. We really, again, again, can use every one of us to do that. The list here is just a small group, uh, or a small list of folks. There are a lot of other organizations that are out there. So with that, um, I would open it up for any questions that you may have. Hopefully I didn't inundate you with data and um, your eyes didn't cross too badly. I appreciate you know what? And I can go ahead and turn the lights on now, too, because I want to make sure we...